All right, so we're in this website, lifescience.com, right? It says here, 10 extinct giants that once roamed North America. Hmm. American cheetah, right? The Amer American cheetah stood a little taller than the modern cheetah with a shoulder height of about 2.75. All right, so now we know cheetahs and lions and all that are from the uh, feline cat family, right? The big cats. And uh, I'm going to show you where their most common ancestor really originated. And I'm going to show you how they don't really know where the... Uh, cat family originated. They're still debating this today. Pleistocene megafauna. It says it's a uh, set of large animals that lived on Earth during the Pleistocene epoch and became extinct during the Quaternary Extinction event. All right. So we're going to go to North America here. All right. So during the American megafauna extinction event around 12,000 years ago, 90 genera of mammals weighing over 44, 44 kilograms became extinct. All right, so again, they got the giant sloths, short face beers, tapirs, peccaries, and it says right here, American lion. All right, so let me show you, American lion. There's an extinct panthering cat that lived in North America during the Pleistocene epoch, 340 to 11,000 years ago. All right, so we had lions too. All right, we had lions. So we're going to talk about a lot of animals here and a lot of things. Uh, it might get boring to you, but it should not. All right. It's a lot of good info. Uh, we're going to show a lot of correlation here. And uh, this article I found here in National Geographic correlates with what I'm going to basically be showing. And it says here the rights of mammals. All right. And we're going to go to a certain part of this article. So it says early in the Miocene, Africa's long isolation ended 
when it and Arabia came back into contact with Eurasia. That's when the ancestors of many mammals we think of native to Africa arrived, all right? So a lot of animals that you thought were native to Africa, that's when they actually came. They weren't in Africa, all right? First came the ancestors of the antelope, all right? We're going to see, well, if you study the hoofed uh, animals that originated in America. So antelope has hooves. And then we got cats. We're going to see where they originate. Giraffes and rhinos. Later, around 10 million years ago, North American mammals like camels. There you go. Camels. Horses. And dogs. All right. North American mammals. These are from America. Originate in America. Camels, horses, and dogs. Yes, dogs. You know my Shalot video. Anubis and Shalot. And how the ancestors had this animal very sacred and the same kind of mythology as you find with Anubis is the exact same with Shalot, very ancient dog they had and you see the dogs originated in America, all right? So it says about 10 million years ago, they began to arrive there, all right? Almost every animal that roams the Serengeti today is a relative newcomer to the continent, all right? You're always boosting about the lion and and giraffes and camels and all that stuff and that's not even native to your content it says here the evolution of mammals so it says the evolution of mammals has passed through many stages since the first appearance of their synapsid ancestors so the synapsis is basically like the first kind of reptilian uh, mammal like animal right like in the in between they're saying that's what they're describing and it says that the ancestors were in the Pennsylvanian sub-period of the late Carboniferous period. All right, so Pennsylvanian, what is that? All right, so Pennsylvanian geology, what does that mean? All right, it says the Pennsylvanian, also known as the Upper Carboniferous or Late Carboniferous, is the ICS geologic timescale, younger of the two sub-periods. All right, so it says it lasted from roughly 320, 23.2 million years ago to 298 million years ago. Very long time, right? As with most, most other geochronologic units, the rock beds that define the Pennsylvanian are well identified. They know what they're talking about and they know what region of the world specifically is what they're going to tell you. But the exact date of the start and end are uncertain by a few hundreds of thousands of years. The Pennsylvanian is named after U.S. state of Pennsylvania where the cold productive beds of this age are widespread, all right? It was mainly there. So what happened there again? Mammals first evolved from there, Pennsylvania. We're talking about North America. We're talking about the oldest land out of the water, right? Remember part one? What does Louis Agassiz tell us? And, and now the Maya also, they, it's in their foundational mythology and history actually that they are the, the first, you know, out of the water, the Mayak, from the bosom of the water, they came up. And if you read the Popo Vu, it has the same story as Genesis, the creation story. All right, so we're talking about the real old world, all right? So again, the evolutionary history, right, of the uh, mammals, it says the Archaeotyrus and Cleocidrops, all right. I know these names are weird. You're going to hear a lot of names, a lot of different speeches throughout this video. Just bear with me. You can watch it a couple of times. Maybe it'll, you know, you understand and we should be able to distinguish between all of them and where they go. But uh, these two, again, is the earliest known synopsis. Remember, these are the first uh, reptilian mammal-like animals that lived in the Pennsylvania sub here. So they know this was in Pennsylvania area right there. The bets, they, they got the proof. They know it happened 323 between 29 million years ago, they say, right? So supposedly, right? And um, again, this is the animals they show. I just wanted you to see real quick. And they start having hair, fur, and all that, and they say it start evolving, right? Well, that's the story they tell us, right? But what I want to show you is that they're admitting that this happened here. And they called it the Pennsylvania uh, geologic scale or time, time scale, all right? So I'm reading this article now from the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, all right, Scholastic uh, Journal here. 
by L.L. Jacobs, says, says D.A. Winkler and P.A. Murray, says modern mammal origins, evolutionary grades in the early crustaceans of North America. All right. Now it starts talking about it too. It says major groups of modern mammals have their origins in the Mesoic era, yet the mammalian fossils record is generally poor for that time interval. Fundamental morphological changes that led to modern mammals are often represented by small samples of isolated teeth. Fortunately, functional wear facets on teeth allow prediction of the morphology of, of, of including teeth that may be unrepresented by fossils. All right, so it's a lot to read here, but I just want to show you what they're saying. Basically, down here you can you know, pause it if you want to read all of it. And it says, a tooth from the early crustaceans, this is about 110 million years before the present, of Texas, right, in Texas, North America again, test previous predictions based on lower molars of the morphology of upper molars and early tribal phoenic definitions. Lingual cus protocone is primitive without shear facets as expected, but the cheek side of the tooth is derived advanced and having distinctive cups along the margin. The tooth, although distressingly in inadequate to define many features of the organism, demonstrates unexpected morphological diversity at a strategic stage of mammalian evolution and falsifies previous claims of the earliest occurrence of true marsupials. So it falsifies theories they already had. So there's a lot of new information. We're going to see that throughout this video as well. And, uh, you know, again, just have uh, an open mind when I'm reading the rest of the stuff because now you know mammals originated here now that you know that now have some common sense right because we just read right in the uh national geographic article all those mammals that ended up in africa right that weren't even there so where do you think they're coming from what, what was the track they took to get there right that's what i'm going to show you and i've shown you before is for example like this map right here right is showing um america and uh, asia actually connected and, uh, you know, they tell us this all the time. They'll, they'll tell us that at that time, Asia and America was connected. A lot of these things are basically originating in America or supposedly in Asia. But if they're connected, right, isn't it like they were in America too? I mean, they're not going to just stay in Asia, right? And the mammals originated in America. So how, how did they get to Asia? You understand what I'm saying? So even though they, they grab and they'll say, well, this animal originated in Asia, they're not going all the way back, right? You're just starting right there. They ha there's a history before that, all right? And this land was all connected as this map shows, all right? I want to talk about now, so we've done a lot of correlation so far, right? Um, you know, with mammals being here, uh, originating here. So we're going to talk about the cat family, right? Or what they call the Felidae, right? The Felidae is a family of mammals in the order of Carnivora. All right, the Carnivora species or family, all right? So, so as I was just showing you here in prehistory.com, all right, we had an American lion. We had lions over here, right? We had lions in America, all right? Scientists tell you straight up, they don't know if they had the mane or not. So they can't say it didn't when they try to dry it like it didn't. The American lion was substantially larger than the living lion, a lot bigger than the living lion of today, which is not really native to Africa, because remember, all those came into Africa. Bones m from more than 100 individuals have been recovered from the Rancho La Brea asphalt deposit. All right, so they're from the Philidae family. All right, so I know you're gonna say, but, but Crimeo, they, they migrated into America. They came from Asia, right? All right, so let's see what's going on here. Now remember, in the beginning, Mammals originated here in America, right? So it says here that the first cats emerged during the ugly Ocene about 25 million years ago with the appearance of Proilurus, all right? And Fisodelurus. The latter species complex was ancestral to two main lines of phyllids, the cats in the extent subfamilies and a group of extinct cats of the subfamily, Macairodontinae which include the saber-toothed cats such as the Smilodon, the false saber-toothed cats, the Bordobo Felidae and Nimravidae, and not true cats, but are closely related. So you're gonna know, learn about all this, all right? Just bear with me. Together with the Felidae Viverradiae, all right? Hyenas and mongooses, they constitute the Feliformia. We're gonna see where all this originates, all right? So it says that the first cats 
come from these kind of to these, these well the oldest they found and uh, ancestors they can't link them up with fossils but this is the oldest type of cat like animal they have found they're not they can't link it with modern cats they're going to tell you that right so let's just real quick it says proilotus is an extinct felid genus that lived in europe in asia approximately 25 million years ago right so they're telling you europe and asia here right but check this out but they'll tell you in the beginning they found only in Europe and Asia, but as we go down, it says several Proilurus grade fossils have been found in North America, but remain undescribed. Why do they may not describe? This is what I'm trying to show you. They're not trying to have you study or even look at anything related to origins in America, especially when it comes to cats. They don't want you to, you know, the lion, all that, that, you know. So it remains undescribed. These include the Queen Quarry Cat, known from a complete skull, which has den dentition similar to Prolurus lemanisis, but a slightly larger skull. Robert Hunt also noticed several specimens that he believed belonged to Prolurus great felids, including a pair from the Sheep Creek site in Nebraska, one lynx sized felid, the other closer in size to a leopard. He also noted a remarkably individual from East Cuyumungue locality, possibly the same species as a larger Sheep Creek specimen, and another specimen from Echo Quarry. All right, so all these they found in America, all right? And as you can see here, it says location of Proilorus fossil finds based on paleobiology database, all right? And look what it's telling you here in America as well. How come they didn't say that in the beginning, right? They found this over here too. So how can they say it originated here when mammals originated in America, right? Now it says Proilurus is believed to have evolved from earlier alleroid carnivorans such as Stegnogali and Haplogali. It is likely ancestor of Pesedaluris, which lived 20 to 10 million years ago and probably gave rise to the major felid lines. All right, so all these, these are the ancestors of cats, all right, including the extinct Machirodontes, the extinct felines and pantherines, although the phylogeny phylogeny of the cats is still not precisely known they don't know the origin the true history of where they originated all right i know this is wikipedia but look at the source all right we're going to go to that right now now we're going to read from this article real quick it says phylogeny and evolution of cats felidae right this is in a book called Biology and Conservation of Wild Felids from the Oxford University Press. All right, and we're going down to the article by Lars Werdeling, Nobuyuki Yamuguchi, Warren E. Johnson, and Stephen J. O'Brien. All right, now it says here, cats, wild as well as domestic, fossil as well as living, are familiar to people around the world. The family Felidae has a worldwide distribution and has been associated with humans in various ways throughout history. Their functional morphology, ecology, and behavior have been the subject of intense scrutiny by scientists over for over 200 years. They keep changing their mind. This is what I'm trying to show you. The fossil records of cats is extensive and some of its members are among the most recognizable of extinct animals. Despite all this, the phylo phylogeny and evolution of the family Philadae and even the content of the family have remained poorly understood all right it's been poorly understood they're guessing when they say it originated all right so it says that um you know that when they tell you where they found the first um which is called proiludus they'll tell you it's in france all right so as it says here in the fisher feeling of the quarry region in france where most of our knowledge of early european carnivorans originates philly forms are not known before millennia 21 millennia all right so they're not known before that Owing to the scarcity of their remains, modern excavations have yet to establish the first occurrence of the Felidae. All right, that's a big one right there. I hope you understood that. They haven't been able to establish the origin of the Felidae family or the cat family. All right, the scarcity of their remains, modern excavations have yet to establish the first occurrence of the Felidae. What we know, however, suggests that some older known finds may be from early Oglisoin. That is before the 28 million point four millennia ago. Thus, the earliest felids appeared sometime between 35 millennia. All right, it says, it is well established on more phological grounds, basic cranial as well as dental, that Proilurus, known from the quarry fisher fields, 
but also from excellent material from the early Muslim site of Saint Germain Le Pou, France, right? That it was a phallid. So they're telling you they know that this this so-called ancestor of the cats, because it looks it, it's a phallid, it's a cat-like animal. Despite this, the morphological path leading to the phallid, all right, condition is not well delineated. All right, so they're telling you that there's no trace. They can't trace it like with each um, passing uh, generation or species, right? They only know that this is a cat-like animal. This is the oldest they found. But we already know they found some in America too, right? So they don't know where the cat family originated. Now, let's read about the Eleroidae. It's an extinct superfamily of the feline-like carnivores that are or were endemic to what? North America and South America, Africa and Asia. Endemic. What does endemic mean? Native or isolated to that region, off that region. All right. So the super family uh, of feline like carnivores is endemic to North America. All right. The super family includes the f families of Felidae, right? Cats, right? Hespertidae, mongoose, right? Hyanidae. <laughs> Hyenidae and Viveridae. All right. So let's take a look about uh, uh, some of these. So it says Viveravide is an extinct family within the superfamily Miacoida. All right. So Miacoida, it says here, is a paraphyletic superfamily that has been traditionally divided into two families of carnivores, Myocidae and Viveridae. All right. So these, they're talking about like carnivore like animals. All right. They are related to carnivorans and lived from the early Paleocene to the Eocene. Now further down it says, the Bivera, the Bivera rabbits were thought to be the earliest carnivorans. They first appeared in the Paleocene of North America about 60 million years ago. North America, the first carnivorans. Wang and Tedford proposed that they arose in North America 65 to 60 million years ago spread to Asia, then later to Europe, all right? So, what are they telling you? That carnivores, right, originated where? In North America, and that would include cats, right? Lions, all that, the cat family, they're carnivores, right? So, we read earlier, right, that the lion came into, right? Dogs came into, all these animals came into Africa just 10 million years ago, all right? But we see that carnivores been in Americas, over 65 million years ago, right? According to their studies, right? So it says here, earliest known carnivoran auditory bulla and support for a recent origin of crown group carnivora, all right? By, by P. David Polly, Gina D. Wesley Hahn, Ronald E. Heinrich, Graham Davis, Peter Hout, uh, School of Biological Sciences, Dental Biophysics Group, Queen Mary University of London, all right? I'm just gonna go down to a certain part. Now it says here, in this paper, we described the first auditory bulla found in Bivir Rarits. Remember carnivorans, the first carnivorans, and use it to place the group in a phylogenetic context. Until this discovery, the lack of specimens of early carnivorans in which the bulla and other basic cranial structures were preserved made phylogenetic relationships between Bivirids and living carnivora difficult to reconstruct. They didn't know before. Bivir Ravids are the earliest carnivorans known in the fossil record, first appearing in the Paleocene of North America about 60 million years ago. All right, but they are derived in having lost their third molar. Some authors have argued that bivirates belong to the same group carnivora with no special relation to any subgroup. All right, we're in this book called Evolution of Tertiary Mammals of North America, Volume One. It's very small here, but I'll, I'll read it out to you. It says all known families of Credons and carnivorans, with the exception of the carnivoran families Viviradii and Hesperitae mongoos, have been found in territory of North America. All right, so even before the Viviraids came around that we just read, we're talking about a very long time ago, tertiary North America. All right, so it says that all these families of Credons and carnivorans um, basically came out of or were found in the territory of North America. Although the Hyanadi are represented only by a single Pliocene genus, Oaxinids, Credonta, and Canids, Carnivora, Canids or dogs, right? Canids, 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 dogs, Carnivora probably originated in North America. 
The earliest records and main centers of radiation and di diversification are in North America. All right. Orsids also probably originated in North America. If you don't know what a, the orsid is, what basically where you get bears from. All right. So they're telling you dogs, bears, and all this stuff came. Orsids probably originated in North America. Not probably. They did. Although this was not their main center of radiation. Although Procyonids carnivora have an old world origin and do not appear in North America until the Miocene, today they are known almost exclusively from the New World. They've been here, all right? All right, so now we're going to talk about the Caniformia um, family or species, or Canoeida, literally dog like, is a suborder within the order of Carnivora. Remember, Carnivora or Carnivorans originated in America, all right? So we're going to read about them. It says here in Wikipedia that the center of diversification for Caniformia is North America and Northern Eurasia. All right. So we're in this book now. It's called The Beginning of the Age of Mammals by Kenneth D. Rose. All right. And just going to continue. It says caniforms can be divided into two clad cladis, Sinoidea canids and Artoidea, all other caniforms. Early canids were common in North America, but did not reach the old world until the late Miocene, all right? So watch, current evidence indicates that canids or dogs, right, originated in North America, whereas arctoids evolved in the old world and dispersed multiple times to North America, all right? So, but they, you know, came from here originally. Now it says canids, again, dogs, right or foxes wolves coyotes and jackals which are cursorial relatively omnivorous carnivorous again dogs are from where america originated in north america dogs again shalot right anubis that was here man that was over here we got the oldest dogs we again mammals originated in america right says the most extensive fossil record of early fare or carnivore, carnivora forma hyadodontai and oxynanidae is centered in North America. North America. You guys are starting to see the trend. I'm going to keep here in America. During the Eocene, both Cradon groups, Biver, Ravids, Myasis, and Caniform carnivorans are known from all three Laurasian continents. And Ninravids, Filiforms were present in North America and Europe. Crown clade Carnivora did not appear until the mid-late Eocene, and all basal carnivorans were extinct by the late Eocene. Carniforms always were far more diverse in North America than any other continent. As noted above, Eocene nimravids are known from Europe and North America, but the earliest crown clade phyllodes are known only from the early Oligocene of Europe. All right, so when we start talking about cats and lions and all that, we gotta know that you know they found the well the closest or oldest type of cat here in america they they know the mammals came out of here you know the first carnivores and all these californians again and uh, also this sedu dalurus it says here a prehistoric cat that lived in europe asia and north america all right so again when you you know when you read about origin of things and uh, you got to keep researching you got to go really deep with it don't just go with the first thing you read oh it was originated in asia and then you got to try to see other sources and other information to see if that's the truth truth you know what i mean so when you look at a lion as you can see here you know you just picture them you know lions elephants all that stuff walking in north america all right america lion pantera atrox all right and we had the pantera onca right the jaguar uh, it says that uh late pleistocene in north america 180 to 10,000 years ago all right from the carnivora felidae family right and we also had uh the American cheetah. Yeah, we had cheetahs, right? American cheetah. Scientific name, Miracinonyx trumani. All right, carnivore. We had the first carnivores, right? When did it become extinct? The American cheetah is thought to have become extinct 10,000 years ago. Hmm, I wonder what happened. We're talking about floods here. This cat was native to North America. All right, the prohorn antelope, Anticopara americana of North America, is one of the fastest land animals on the planet. Able to reach speeds of 100 kilometers per hour for short bursts and 40 to 50 kilometers per hour over long distances. Why does it need such a turn of speed? There are no American predators that can sprint anywhere near fast enough to catch an adult. 
Pronghorn is a straight pursuit. Well, there aren't any today. Some scientists believe that the Prohorn evolved to run so quickly as a way of evading an American cat that evolved along the same lines as the African cheetah. A slender feline built for speed, this was the American cheetah. The idea of cheetah-like animals sprinting after prohorns on the American Great Plains seems far-fetched, but prehistoric America was a very different place from place we know today.